Oysters are tough, just like New Yorkers. Restoration is definitely gonna happen. The Billion Oyster Project is a nonprofit organization. Our mission is to restore oyster reefs to New York's harbor. It's called the Billion Oyster Project because the goal is to reach a billion oysters in the New York Harbor by 2035. New York Harbor used to be totally full of oysters. You know, a billion oysters is a tiny drop in the bucket compared to what used to be here. 50% of the world's oysters were coming out of New York Harbor. When you think of New York City, we don't necessarily think of it as a coastal city. You know, we see the skyscrapers, the busy streets, Times Square, but we don't necessarily associate it with water. We're not installing the oysters for consumption. We're putting them in the water for educational purposes and also the benefits of the ecosystem. Oysters provide three essential ecosystem benefits. Oyster reefs act as a home or even just a breeding ground for fish. So when you have more reefs, it increases the biodiversity. We have crabs. So you can see that bluish color on them, like a robin's egg. The second ecosystem benefit is that they filter water. So one oyster can filter about a gallon of water in one hour. They take in water that's suspended in the water column. And then on the other end, they'll create sort of like a pseudo feces, which is fake feces, where that sediment then is heavier, so it's deposited like sand would and sink down to the bottom. And oyster reefs can protect shorelines. And oyster reefs, they grow pretty much flat, um, as opposed to upward. So if you're imagining a wave coming to shore and it passes over a reef, it slows down that wave energy so that before it hits land, it, the impact is lessened. Oyster reefs are to New York Harbor what coral reefs are to the Caribbean. I was uh, born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, so I am a native New Yorker. My role here, I manage the community reefs program, and my love for the harbor essentially started sort of at a young age. My dad was a fisherman, and so anytime he'd go out to the harbor and go crabbing, I was right there with him. In 2007, I was going into high school and a New York Harbor school was actually very new. Through the New York Harbor school, I learned more about oysters. I always had a passion to just want to do more conservation work and to do my part to help restore local ecosystems. I'm taking in and also, you know, giving back to the community that I grew up in and was a part of. I've always learned to fish with my uncles, go out on boats and fish with my dad. So I always liked the marine lifestyle. I have like a passion for taking care of marine animals. Oysters definitely became more important to me as I learned more about the Harbor School and the Billy Oyster Project. Honestly, I feel just like amazed. I'm like, wow, these little oysters can really do the job. Oop, yeah, keep your toes on those bars, otherwise it's slippery. We also do water testing. We look for a bacteria called Enterococcus and that bacteria is usually found in feces. Today's mission is to collect water samples from the central section of the East River. We incubate our samples for 24 hours and then read them. And then we take those jars to the Williamsburg um, field station where we do the testing there. The bad weeks almost always correspond to rainfall. The more rain, the worse the numbers. I mean, clean water is the key to public access. If the water's clean, People are going to use it. We have a shell recycling program. So we partner with over 75 restaurants around New York City. Normally, restaurants that sell shellfish, those shells would go directly into the trash. We have a truck that goes around to different restaurants about twice a week to collect any shells, mostly oyster and clam shells that were eaten at that restaurant. It's a little smelly, but you know, it comes with the work. We're taking those shells back in and recycling them. So the truck then takes the shells to our curing site on Governor's Island. The shells sit out in the sun. They're exposed to all the elements so that the sun then breaks down any living or organic matter that's on that shell. And within a year's time, you have a lake completely white shell. We use those shells to uh, act as the base or the habitat for the baby oysters to settle onto. So each one of those little dots you see are spat. So those are all little baby oysters there. 
At the same time, we're uh, conditioning adult oysters in our hatchery. So we'll take local adult oysters that are ready to spawn. So we'll simulate the natural conditions in which oysters will spawn in the wild. And so you'll have the female oysters releasing eggs, the male oysters will release sperm, and you can see the water just become cloudy, and that's when the oyster larvae is then formed. And so we'll introduce the larvae into a tank with New York City Harbor water, and the shells are in that tank as well. And once the larvae is ready, they'll swim around and settle onto a shell. And when they're large enough, so about the size of like a, an ant or so, um, we can then place them into one of our reef structures or nurseries as we did today. Today we have 30 sepa cages. 25 of them have spat on shells, so baby oysters spat attached to shells, and five of them have adult oysters. Today what we did, we installed a nursery at Brooklyn Bridge Park in preparation for a much larger structure that's gonna go into the site next year. We installed 30 sepa cages around uh, 7,000 oysters at this site. With time, we'll be able to bring students down, measure the growth of the oysters, see what critters or fish live here. I feel very hopeful for the future because I know that like generations like mine, we want to see a better environment for our future generations. It's a constant motivation. I really do enjoy just being out in the water, and I understand that to keep a healthy environment, we need to give back as much as we take. My vision is to have more local environmentalists. A lot of the communities that we work in, you know, they are residential areas. So the folks who live here, they know probably more about the site than we do. And so it's, it's great to see community members and students uh, participating and engaging in something that's super local. Because we don't want folks who don't live here making decisions about our homes, right? Um, so if we have more local involvement in what's happening, I think that just creates a, a smooth route for more stewardship.